Hello and welcome to a new episode of Laravel Core Adventures, where we take pieces of our favorite PHP framework and together figure out how they work in the background. This is level number four of Laravel Facades. So let's dive right in. Okay, welcome back everybody. So until now we've been talking about what facades are, how to use them, how they work, and we've also been talking about testing them. But there's one more thing I'd like to cover, and today is about the so-called real-time facades. This feature was introduced to Laravel in version 5.4, and it makes it possible to treat any of your classes as a facade. Okay, so what does this mean? To demonstrate this, I have a simple class called time. So let's check that out. I have it here under my app directory and here it is. It's a simple class that has one method and it's called day since my birthday. And as a parameter, you put in a date string and what you get back is the difference in days to now, also to today. Okay, let's see how um, this works and what this puts out. I have here a new endpoint called real time facades. And here I'm now creating this new time object. Here it is. And I'm returning what we get returned from the method day since birthday. And let me just check the format. We have year, month, date. So this is the format we need to provide. So this means for me, this is 1985, um, 04 and 12. And that's my birthday. So let's go to the browser. Um, let's go to this endpoint. And here we have now 12,000, what is it? 339 days. Okay, let's just make sure that this is a wrong, uh, this is the correct number. So let's divide it by the days of the year. And yeah, oh damn, I'm pretty old. This is possible and I'm now 33 years old. Okay, so this is working. But back to the topic, so we wanted to discuss real-time facade. Okay, so as I mentioned, we can now use any class as if it was a facade. So what we want to do is we want to treat this time class as if it was a time facade so how would this look like so when time would be a facade we could get rid of that so we don't need to create the object and we could use um, something like this so we would call a static method on a time facade okay but of course we don't have a facade created yet so how does this work so what we have to do is we have to add to the beginning of our class's namespace facades. So like this. And now we should already work. Let's get rid of this empty spaces here and let's try again. And as you can see, it is still working. So we are just changing the namespace of the class that we want to use as a facade. And from that moment on, we can treat this class as if it really was a facade. It's crazy when you think about it, but that's all you have to do. And as you've seen, it works. So it took me quite some time to find out this is working. And it works because there is a class in Laravel called alias loader. Let's check this class out, alias loader. And here we have a method called load. And the alias loader is responsible for creating aliases for facades we want to use inside Laravel. So when we go to our config app file here, you can see that here we have this alias key um, in the array. And here we say we are creating aliases for all these classes. And this is now the new alias to the class. Or it's not created yet, but um, the alias loader will do that for us. So this means when we use a facade, we can use the alias like the app alias instead of using the whole um, namespace. So what we can do now is we can use this alias instead of importing the whole namespace. 
let's give you a simple example. So let's say we want to use the cache facade. Normally what I would do is import the namespace. So I will do it like that. And then let's say we want to put something to the cache the key test, the string is test, and let's give it 10 minutes. Okay, so we should see no error, so this should work. But now instead of that, we can get rid of the namespace, and we just need this slash here, and it should work as well. Let's try it out. Okay, no errors, so I think it does work as well. And this is because the slash just says um, we are calling this alias from the root namespace. And that's what's happening because of this array here. We are creating all these aliases and they live in the root namespace. Okay, so this is about aliases. And this is why we have the alias loader. Okay, but in the load method, we also have here something that takes care of um, the real-time facades. So what do we have here? First, we check if there is a namespace defined for real-time facades. And it's just a string called facades with a slash. And then we check if this namespace is part of the alias string that we get as a parameter. And that's exactly what we have done with our time class. We have added this new facades part to the beginning of our namespace. So if the alias in the load method here begins with this real-time facade string, we're going to load this facade. And before we can load it, we need to check if it already exists. And here it gets really interesting. Laravel checks if a facade already exists. So how would that be possible? We only have our time class. We haven't created a facade ourselves yet. Yeah, but maybe Laravel did. Because if the facade does not exist yet, Laravel will create it here. It will first get a facade stub with the file getContent method. And in this stub, we have just the base facade file. Let's take a look. It's pretty similar to other facades we have already seen yet. Just with some dummy text. And as always, we have a getFacade accessor method, which we need to define the facade's root class. Then in the format facade stop method, replace this dummy text with like the namespace, the class name, and the target of the real class that we want to make. And we need that in order to create a real facade out of it. And then when we have this new file, we're saving it in the cache. And we already have one in the cache because we have already used the real time facade for a time. And this is why we should see here under storage framework, cache, this facade file. And as you can see here, this is a facade file for our time class. And in the get facade accessor method, we are turning back the namespace of our real class, of the, of the time class that we have been using. And this looks exactly like if I would create a facade for the time class. So Laravel is doing this in the back and saving this file in the cache. So that's pretty amazing how this is working. And now that the file is created, we are returning the path here. And then back inside the load facade, we are going to require this new class now. And this is why we can use this file that actually we haven't created, but Laravel has done it in the back. And this is why we can use our time class as if it was a facade. And for me, that's pretty amazing. And the first time I, I figured out how this is working, it yeah, kind of blew my mind. And I think Taylor got quite creative here to implement this kind of cool feature. But I also have to admit, I haven't used real facades a lot lately. If you're interested in how you can use them, there is a nice article on Taylor Otwell's blog on Medium. And there he describes how he's using real-time facades in his applications. So if you're interested in that, um, check out this article. All right, that's it from me for this videos. I hope I see you in the next ones again. Stay tuned.